when you think about the Bears in the rivalry and your memory would be what? Um, super competitive, uh, hard nose, anything is possible. Um, throw the records out the window. Uh, you know, the, uh, the unpredictability uh, of the game. You know, I, the last game as a Packer that I played against uh, against the Bears uh, was was the year in which we we lost the championship game to the Giants, and we played. I think it was the day or two days before Christmas. We played at at Soldier Field. Chicago ended the year three and thirteen. Of course, we ended with a much better record and almost made it to the Super Bowl. But uh, true to form, we had everything to play for. They had, you know, one foot in the parking lot, so to speak. It was the coldest game I think uh, in Soldier Field history, uh, still to date. And we played as if we had nothing to play for, and we had one foot in the parking lot, and they absolutely just pounded us. Um, and I, I attribute that to uh, to the to the rivalry itself. So you you just never know in, in, in this this rivalry. And just think of all the great players that have played against each other in this rivalry, and, and dating back to you know way longer than we've been alive. Well, I've got Erlacher on at the top of hour number two. Uh, what was it like uh, scanning the defense and seeing 54 on the other side? Well, it was always a chess match. Obviously, um, Brian's athletic ability was superior to, to really anybody uh, at his position. His skill set was, was totally different than anyone else you would face. Um, and, and he was extremely bright. So not only did you have to, to outsmart him, but you had to be precise, uh, trying to get the ball over his head down the middle and their, and their Tampa two defense was, uh, was, uh, very tough to do and not many guys could do that. And so, you know, you go, okay, well, we'll throw it under him. And that was equally as hard. His, his skill set was just, just so good that, uh, getting a blocker up on him on the second level was, was easier said than done on paper. There's a lot of things you could do against him in that defense, but when it came down to actually uh, executing it, it was it was a much different story. So now, obviously, Brett, Great we, player. We, we all know we all know Brett. You're a Mississippi guy, uh, and you were acquired by the team from Atlanta. Uh, did anybody have to sit you down or or tell you about the significance of playing the Bears before you first did in Green Bay? Uh, no, you know, I, I was actually listening to uh, NFL Network last night. They had Mike Singletary on it, and uh, I echo a lot of the things he said. Um, and that question was posed to him, uh, and and uh, much like I would answer it. You know, you, you sort of learn very quickly from uh, mostly the elder statesmen, um, either on the team presently or – you know, like in in my case, uh, Ray Nitschke and Max McGee and, and uh, a fair amount of guys still lived in the area. And it, it seemed like the first conversation you had with them always ended up talking about the Bears, and which I thought was kind of weird. You know, like, why, why the Bears? But so it was kind of etched in your mind right away. And, and I guess that just kind of stays with you, and then you – you then in turn become the elder statesman and you relay that to the younger generation and it just kind of falls in line. And uh, when you when you played them, I mean, did you ever then become that guy who would tell new Packers, hey, let, let's circle this one, folks. This is pretty big to everybody around here. Did you then become that yeah, guy? You know, to- yes, I, I, I did do that as well as others. Uh, I, you know, when, when Bear Week was getting close, um, you know, I, I would much like the playoffs, and, and veteran uh, players will say that to the younger group uh, when approaching the playoffs. It's a much different game. The, the you know, the speed is 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 greater. You know, and, and all that I guess to a certain extent is true. But from a rivalry standpoint, it was uh, uh, unmatched by by any other. So you kind of heighten the awareness for the, for the young. I mean, it, it just was like the first day of practice, you come out bear week and it was like, it was like the first day of practice ever. 
you were you were running around, you were you were fired up, you were you were excited about uh, whatever the game plan was, and uh, it, it just brought a you know a heightened a, a, an overly heightened sense of uh, excitement than than it would any other week. A couple more minutes with Brett Favre. Now this one, this one, this, yeah. you know, this opens the, the entire season. And the 100th year, uh, you know, I mean, so this, this brings even more of a special meaning. Doesn't it, though? I mean, doesn't it, though? Uh, I, did you ever bark at Ditka or him back at you? You got a good story like that from this rivalry? Right? No, I was always afraid of him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was afraid at 65 he'd kick my ass. <laughs> um, and he probably would have. So, he, he, you know, there's some that you don't provoke. Yes, Warren Sapp was one. Earl Acker was another one. Reggie White was one, of course. Uh, Mike Ditka <laughs> was was even even in his retired and older uh, uh, age. You did not provoke him. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on Directv for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.